Wow. Joining us from Capitol Hill, member of the Senate Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committee's Democratic Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. Tim, good to have you on the show. Good to be with you guys. Thanks. This feels like at any moment it could really explode into a very bad international incident, if not something much more. Um, what are what, what's what 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 are the options at this point? M Mika, you're right. This is a catastrophe. Although it's one, I, I've heard some of our intel folks say they couldn't have predicted it. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, Russia has had a military base in Syria for decades. It's the only base they have outside of Russia. And it's been very clear from their behavior during this that as the country gets more and more unstable, they're more and more nervous. I was in the area in July. There were de definite reports of the Assad regime weakening. In growing and so the Russian activity sadly is not surprising but it is a catastrophe and what it points out is that the US just doesn't have a serious strategy um, we haven't had the debate up here about the war against ISIL in Iraq or or especially Syria the the president's final re, you know requested in February a congressional authorization for this campaign Congress has treated it as a matter of indifference and I predict we're going to have one more uh, you know kind of catastrophe like this and one more set of atrocities yeah. after each other until we kind of get together and debate and decide what the US strategy should well, be. Well and also uh, ruling out cooperation with Russia to an extent makes sense except this is happening. Right. How can we not at some, in some way shape or form work with Russia? As you saw uh, from the near miss yesterday, uh, once you have both Russian and American aircraft in this airspace, the chances for just an accident are very, very high. At a minimum, there's got to be better communication. You know, maybe the U.S. has, a, you know, be, has to say we're not going to cooperate, but at least the communication so that we know what they're doing and they know what we're doing because we wouldn't want this to spiral into something, uh, you know, uh, more significant uh, that would would pull the U.S. and Russia into military conflict. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we have two hearings on Russia this morning, one in the Armed Services Committee and one in the Foreign Relations Committee. One is more about Syria, one is more about Ukraine. And so Congress is kind of starting to wake up to this. Okay. But bottom line, we're involved in a war that Congress hadn't debated. And because we haven't debated and the administration hasn't had to come up with a sound strategy, we're in a very vulnerable position right now. Steve. Uh, Tim, the, yes, Congress hasn't debated, but of course the president still has a lot of authority and scope to do what he thinks is necessary. So question one, you implied if you didn't even actually state that you thought the administration had made mistakes or mis whatever. I'd love to hear a little more about that. Yep. And secondly, you said at a minimum we should cooperate with the Russians. But beyond that minimum, what should we be doing at this point to try to do the best we can with what is obviously not a great position for us? Yeah, I said at a minimum we should be communicating with them. I think the cooperation question is one we got to hash out. So look, on the administration side, the president started this war against ISIL with a bombing campaign August 8, 2014, to defend an American embassy in Erbil and protect against a humanitarian atrocity in the Kurdish area of northern Iraq. There was a self-defense rationale that allowed him to start it without Congress. But within two weeks, the the protect the American side of this was done, and at that point, the president's legal authority in my view expired and you can't go on an offensive war without a vote of Congress. He didn't bring a request for an authorization to Congress until February. He waited six months to do that. That was a huge mistake and the authorization request was not really a, one that ha had a significant sort of strategic uh, you know, element to it. And then Congress really gets the blame because it's Congress's authority to declare war and they haven't been willing to take this up for 15 months. So there is a lot of blame to go around. What should we be doing now? I think for about a year, I was a little slow to come to this. Others were calling for it before me. But for about a year, I've said the U.S.'s principal mission in Syria should be to enforce the U.N.'s humanitarian resolutions, two of which that have passed, Russia didn't veto them, calling for cross-border delivery of humanitarian aid into Syria. This refugee crisis, four million have left, but there's another eight million internally displaced in Syria that could leave. We should be working in the north of Syria Syria, together with Turkey and other nations, to provide a safe humanitarian zone for refugees so that they don't need to leave their country. They know that necessities of life will be met. And the U.S. mission in Syria, in my view, should be pinpoint focused provision of humanitarian aid because this is the greatest humanitarian crisis in terms of the numbers affected since World War II. Senator Tim Kaine, thank you very much.